Yes. Normally the thing that is not convenient is probably the thing you should be doing. How comfortable are you being uncomfortable? How do you thrive under pressure? And if you don't do well, don't get started. As a business owner, I take responsibility. I just lost 30 grand before four in the morning. You really can't take your foot off the gas. You or you shouldn't if you wanna just really punch this thing. That's the challenge is when you think that you've made it, you haven't made it anywhere. It has to work where it has to work. Welcome back to Circle of Greatness. I'm your host, Nehemiah Davis, and I got something super special for y'all today, right? Um, man, this gentleman who we're about to bring up, man, somebody who I look up to, um, I watched him one year get every award that ClickFunnels has ever created, right? And then the next year, I watched him speak and burn down the stage. And ever since then, I've literally watched this dude build a non-figure company, right? Founder of Redline still, amazing entrepreneur, amazing man just crushing it in all areas without further ado my god colin what's up bro what's up brother hey man thank you for coming on bro how you been i'm blessed man Good, bro. It's, it's a blessing to be here yeah he hit me up yesterday true story and was yes. like bro you should get down here when are we gonna film and you yeah, said how about yeah. tomorrow yeah <laughs> yeah i com like you commented on my posts and uh, it was something I'm like, bro, when, when I'm getting you on the show? Yeah. And then, yeah, it's tomorrow and you're here, bro. I, I think there's a lesson that. in that. Yes. Because there's so many entrepreneurs or just people in general that do not react and yeah. they push things out. Mm. You need to be intentional with your time. So yeah. look at time, effort, energy, reward yes. and look at it from a sense of like, if this, if you listen, like you can react based on the universe. If somebody reaches out and you respect them and they put something out there and there's nothing that's truly can't be moved to the left or to the right, yeah. react to it. Yeah. And if you can make it, yeah, make it make happen. It. Like it's an eight hour travel day for me yeah. to spend a couple hours yeah. with you, but is yeah. it worth it? Yes, it is. Well, and, I, and I really like, I value your time so much. And I want to just say thank you for doing that for Absolutely. me, bro. Understanding how busy you are, all the mm -hmm. things you got going on and you still came and I, I appreciate it. So you says, and I want to, while we're talking, I just want to pull up our conversations just that we had over the years. But um, one of the commonalities about successful people, bro, is they move with a sense of speed, bro. Most people aren't successful. Like you said, they they always put things in the way. And here's the thing about success that I'm learning is not normally convenient. Mm. It's not convenient to fly here, drive here from Alabama. But you did like it's not convenient when I go to but. Oftentimes we're going to continue to build a relationship, but for someone, just take me out of it, take you out of it. Mm -hmm. What if someone did make that drive and you create a seven or eight figure partnership mm -hmm. or a business or, yeah. or, so I try to tell people normally the thing that is not convenient is the thing that you probably should be doing. A hundred percent. You know what I'm There's saying? So, say that again, brother, because I know people need to hear this. Normally the thing that is not convenient is probably the thing you should be doing. I tell people all the time, success is not convenient. No one's going to give you seven figures mm. or eight figures. Not, yeah, you're right. You got to go put some effort and some some energy and all of that. So 100%. Yeah. There's so much truth to that. Yeah. So let me ask you. So you were in the military once, military model. Like you've, you've lived a lot of lives, bro. Yes, sir. Did you develop your discipline and your just tenacity and just, would you say that's the found? You built this amazing business. Would you say a lot of those foundational things came from the military or you already had that in you from younger? I think a lot of the core values attribute from the military. But I think more than anything, a separating factor for me is to not be spread thin and to really look at my time, effort, energy to a singular reward. And so looking at like distance, direct, I call it the three D's. So distance, direction, distractions, knowing what my goal is, short-term, mid-term, long-term, is it a distraction or quote unquote opportunity yeah. that others see it or perceive it as, yep. is that really, is it worth my time to go and do that? And so, you know, the, the common misconception is to have all these different facets of income coming in, but they don't have one solid source. Mm -hmm. And so they're diversified and they get nowhere because your time is limited. We have a hundred, hundred percent of a hundred percent is you can't get above that. And so if you're diversified that into seven divided by seven for each, you know, it, you can only go so far. And so what I think, um, ultimately I was, I made staff sergeant at 22 years old, which is not common unless you're special forces. And I wasn't, I was military police. But I volunteered and I was intentional with my time. And I knew time in service, time in grade, I can't 
I can't time and service and time in grade. So, so if I was like, so to go grade. from sergeant to staff sergeant, I needed a minimum of, I think it was 24 months. Okay. I can't fast track that. There's nothing else I can do. So what else was I looking at? I was looking at to go from E6 to E7, I needed to go to BNOC. Mm -hmm. BNOC phase one and then phase two based on my military occupational skill. Yeah. So I'm always looking two or three steps ahead, knowing when I get there, at least I'm fast tracked for the next one. And so all I need to do is wait out my time and service, time and grade, knowing where I'm going to go, knowing the distance it's going to take direction and no distractions that's going to take me away from it. Uh, and so like, you know, hmm. I attribute a lot of my success based on drive, fortitude, you know, people that are looking to get into entrepreneurship or taking that leap, I would say like, how comfortable are you being uncomfortable? How do you thrive under pressure? And if you don't do well, don't get started. Yeah. And because you're not going to be successful yeah. and it's going to be too much of a challenge where you need to pivot. How well do you deal under pressure? Yeah. And so there's a lot of pressure, bro. It is. Yeah. It's, it's nonstop, man. Yeah. And it's like how much, I think the difference between like a lot of successful people is, and, and, and not successful it's, is, and, and I'll identify what is success. Success yeah. to me is living life on your own terms mm -hmm. and not baseline just on a monetization figure. Yeah. It's more of like waking up and genuinely enjoying what you do and loving it. Yeah. And, and to me, it's like the separator is I can, if something's stressful, I'll find a solution 15, 20, 30 minutes later, I'm good to go and I'm level-headed and I'm, I'm ready to carry out the day. Mm. Whereas a lot of people will live on that for, for days or weeks and they'll let it compound and they'll stress over things they can't control versus just letting it be, but coming up with or tasking it to someone else to delegate a plan yeah. and then executing it and then making sure, following up to make sure it got, got handled. That's good. So, so one of the things I want to talk about and we was talking about before we started, the difference between seven-figure businesses mm. and whether e-com or a period or mm. an eight figures and I know one of them is delegation mm. how important is just delegating how do you let go like how do you kind of let go like because there's someone's listening to this and they're like I feel like I got to do everything yeah. what what are you telling somebody to just let go bro that's a, that's a hard thing to do when you when it's your baby and you started it yeah. and you have love for what you're doing and a lot of people when they get started, that's what's what they do. It's their baby. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to let go. I would say the, the biggest thing that helped me from the beginning was I hired a recruiting firm because mm. I'm hiring for where I want to be, not where I'm currently at. Mm. And the vision surpasses where I'm currently at. So why hire where my needs are currently? If somebody's putting in a resume, more than likely, they're not where you need them to be. Right. They may be at that level currently and may fill a short void but ultimately, if you're goal setting, mm. what's going to move me from seven figures to eight figures? And a lot of it's it's people and it's uh, it's 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 operating under standard operating procedures and specific guides and uh, it, accountability and delegation and follow ups and having they call it rock drills. So, you know, if it's daily huddles or cadences, cadences based on like, you know, at the end of the day, this is the report that's needed per department. Yeah. You know, I managed about 135, 140 employees, but it wasn't me that was directly managing. I managed, other than my senior leadership, one person, yeah. my executive assistant. Yeah. And that person was a blessing. Yeah. And I called him wild card. And, but he, um, who managed everything? The COO? Uh, well, the, yeah, we had, so we had a vice president of operations. So we broke it down into two major segments. One was manufacturing. Yeah. So the fulfillment distribution, yeah. the manufacturing, laser cut, powder coat, grind. Uh, those department leads would go to the vice president of operations. And then we had an office manager that would handle more of the administration accounts receivable, the ARAP, Got it. Um, and then the customer service side. Yeah. And so then those two would report to me, but it didn't require a lot of like handholding. These were leaders that were leaders and it wouldn't need to be tasked. They knew what their job was. They're going to execute. And when you find the right people, like they don't want to let you down. Yeah. And, those people you need to hold on to yeah. versus what's in it for me mentality is what's best in the best interest of the company. What's in the best interest of all of us. If we do this and we all put in work, 
it's going to be easier for everyone versus yeah. one or two people carrying the load for everybody else. All right, guys, Colin Wayne here, founder of Millionaire Creator, and I've built over a $100 million brand myself, and I want to help you. If you're interested, go to millionairecreator.com, click the link somewhere around this video, or uh, swipe up, swipe down, do something, but don't just sit there. So let me ask you, you said something, cause I want to make sure I don't miss this. You hired a recruiting company. Mm. So when you're hiring a recruiter, just so I understand, you're going to go recruit people that's already at another role at a higher end, trying to get them to your company, right? Not just because you mentioned, well, if they're submitting a resume, that mean they're looking or they may not be there. They fill the short void, but they may not be that A player. I just want to make sure yeah. I, I understand that part. hundred percent. So it's, they were, they're working at a current job and they far exceed what my job description or roles were, but to find the right people, they're likely not putting in a resume because they need a job. Right. They already have one. So what can mm. we do to get buy-in and to bring in some type of executive leadership to a fast growing organization? We were Inc 500, number one in the state of Alabama. We went to the white house. I got a, you know, selfie with the uh, president, president Trump, like, yeah. um, all kind of, kind of accolades for the business side. But, um, I think like, so, so this was the learning mistake. The best thing was hiring a recruiting firm. This, the second, the challenge behind that was I read a book by Jim Collins called Good to Great. Yep. Great book. The uh, red one, right? Red right. Cover, yeah, I, I got to get through that. Yeah. It separated good companies from great companies. Yeah. Companies like General Electric and, you know, and, and what they looked at was like the great companies, um, they were hired internally or promoted from within. And just like the military, we were uh, promoted internally. I tried that same model for... I'd say the first two and a half, three years. And for context, guys, like the first two and a half years as an e-commerce company, we grew from 5,000 square feet into 110,000 square feet warehouse. Crazy. And then we've scaled into 150,000. So when you're growing year over year at triple digits, you know, four or five times, you know, every single year, yeah. it's hard to know where where is the cap of this and where should I be hiring to? Yeah. But that book kind of, it made me think like, well, I need a high, I want to, I want to promote internally. And as they earn it, just keep, but I hit caps. I kept hitting cap after cap after cap and hyper growth companies. You need to, that's when I've had that newfound outlook of like, let's hire for where we want to be and not just promote internally. Of course I want, um, to reward those that are giving a hundred percent, but if they're not constantly like willing to learn and educate and push the boundaries, there's caps to, to everybody. And I knew what like, my strengths and weaknesses are. Yeah. I wouldn't say as the best CEO, I should have hired somebody to replace me so that I could be more on the CMO role Yeah, because that's where my expertise really yeah. aligned. And Mine too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm so not a CEO. That's what I'll be saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so let me ask you because um, we talked about, so evidently one of the pieces too, getting to the eight or nine is the team that you got around you. So that's yes. a, a critical piece. Let's talk about what are some things you're doing for customer? Uh, like you have a lot of repeat customers, like a lot of what are you doing to make the customer experience exceptional? Because as you were growing in your 5,000 square foot to 110 to 150, that just I'm sure like, for example, you know, Andy for like yeah. they're I don't know if they still but they were writing a handwritten letter every yes. day. And I'm like and I don't know if they still do it, but I'm like hot like that is a that was a huge piece of their customer service. Yes. So what are some things some econ brands yeah. who are looking to go from seven to eight could be again to incorporate or things y'all were doing so they know here's what it what we do it here. Yeah. So customer ascension modeling is critical. I mean, like when you look at like the lifetime value, you know, brands, it becomes more and more expensive every single year for acquiring new customers. Yeah. So, I see, I you know, when you, when you it's look not at, getting any cheaper, it's not, and it won't yeah. because there's more and more brands that are being adaptive and pushing a, a lot of money from billboards and print and, yeah. you know, uh, the, the TV side into social media and every year it's just going to compound. So, yeah. Um, customer ascension modeling through multiple tiers. One would be, we had an elite program, an elite group. And basically it was those that have placed five or more orders and have spent, um, a threshold above a certain amount, yeah. about a hundred, I can't remember what it was. Maybe it was like $500. Yeah. And so we had email drip feed sequences that would 
incentivize them based on where they fell within the, that parameter. So place two more, we would start at order three. And then what was the amount total? And so now it could be 10 or 15 different conditions. And I would build out all of these 100%. So, um, but it would be incentivizing them. Two more orders and this much spent and you receive all of this. So it was like a $225 value, mm -hmm. which would be, uh, we did handwritten cards, thank you cards. We did the certificate, the COAs that were printed on metal, had their name custom engraved into it. And it was just micro, I wouldn't even call it a micro touch, touch point because a lot of brands don't go to this extreme, yeah. um, but it builds community. And then more than just community be, beyond a, an Ascension model, we donated millions, over $5 million to nonprofits and charity work. We worked with celebrities like Megan Fox and uh, even Amber Heard and Lance Bass and uh, Marisol Nichols and nonprofit, uh, nonprofits like Habitat for Humanity and yeah. um American Red Cross and so many others that um, people became, they wanted to contribute and help us because of the cause. So it's mm -hmm. like you shop, we donate. Yeah, And it was good. purpose intent, purpose driven. And we called it people over profit. Yeah. And it was like being a hands extended. I feel like that's the, the name community. of a book or something. Oh, it should be. Yeah, yeah. 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 But it's uh, I think just buy in in general, in addition to uh, the, the Ascension model, we did like, for instance, uh, before you get there, because I want to make I want to catch this because that's good. You're dropping so much gold. I want to get you think every company should add that purpose mm. in there. And you talked about it early because I, I don't want to also go too far ahead because I want to mention that, too. You talked about. We got people starting their brands. We got people at six figures. We got people at seven figures. But I do want to go off of building the foundation because when we were talking online you knew who your customer was you yes. knew was it purpose or driven like mm. like break those things down yeah. too because i want people to understand like because even now and this is all i don't know my exact customer mm. like how you broke it down in yeah. very specifics like i'm not your customer right mm. for that for that brand right but i'm i'm your customer for another brand but yeah you know very specific with who your target is, where they live at, what they do. Yeah. I think it's important that people get it so down to that so you can yeah. advertise to your person, not to anyone else, or you wasting right. ad dollars potentially. 100%. And yeah. I think, I mean, you hit it spot on. Like if you're offering like a service or product, you can always sub niche down, but knowing who is your primary demographic so that you can write the copy, write the creative. If it's product driven, would they actually want it? Um, and then creating a customer feedback loop to give you uh, kind of a known understanding. Should Changing this color, would that increase it? And if there's a drastic increase in uh, a poll, then, oh, okay, I thought this would do worse, but it did better. I'm definitely going to push it because I leave emotion out of it. It's all, it's all data driven. Yeah. But it's, it's listening to the customer and truly like you care what the customer has to say. And we did. We would do live streams and I would talk one on one. I think people connect with people and the best brands around are identified by individuals mm. and, and being a voice for a voiceless brand so that they have similarity traits. So like our demographic, I could break it down. Think of it. This is our demographic. And then you've got extended sub niches. Yeah. So women, 30 to 30 to 65 plus Christian conservative married homeowners. That's our primary demographic. Yeah. And then you broke it down into like um, the higher end tier, which would be family and relationships. So custom monograms, tree of lives, um, things of that nature. And then you'd get into like uh, faith based products. So there's, there's the second extension sub niche. And then you get into like pets and then specific into pets would be like primarily dogs, dog lovers, and then cats and horses. And then we broke it into like um, general decor. And then we went into kids specific. Mm -hmm. And so now we're targeting parents, right? But then if you look at it beyond this, because Redline's a catalyst for something much more. So we've got over 2 million customers across the nation. Um, but, you know, if, if we were to create sub brands or partnership affiliates with someone like BarkBox and we get $60 on a cost per acquisition for an affiliate side. Now I'm taking what would be a $10, $10 item, a uh, new customer acquisition, and I'm stretching the lifetime value because X percent are buying the affiliate uh, opt-in on uh, a product that's not mine. Mm. And so now I'm turning a acquisition for my, my customers, but then serving them intentionally because I know that they're a dog lover, they would also 
incentivized based on the value exchange of being a part of these other companies. So you got me sitting here thinking what some affiliates that I could be doing essentially what you just said with. Yeah. Ooh. It's powerful really when you think about it, but it all comes down to your demographic. You need to know who your avatar is so that you can be valuable to them. And, and, it, and all it is, is value exchange. What can I do to provide um, a good value, good service, good stewardship to them with good intentions? Yeah. And when you, it, it just makes it so much easier to write the copy, the creatives, the offers. And I know if you, like for instance, I'm a watch guy, so here's a Hublot. So like if you go into a store and you see four or five different watches, you become overwhelmed and it becomes- Yeah, talk like, about that. You were talking to me about that. Yeah. It, yeah, that's good. It becomes kind of like um, friction that's not needed. And there's so many brands that I see out there that do this. If it's new customer acquisition, they have not bought from you. They likely haven't heard of your brand, but they weren't on any of the social channels, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you're running omni-channel ads from, they weren't on, they weren't there to buy your product. They're not even familiar with you. I only need to show them what the consumer interest was based on what they clicked. So many brands take them directly to a collection page or a homepage, or, you know, a lot of them will go directly to what they call a PDP, a product display page. Mm -hmm. um, what we do is click funnels, right? Funnels. So we'll build a fishbowl strategy, magnifying the particular product, overcoming objectives, adding in scarcity, trust. And there's a way that you can be ethical behind all of this. Yeah. And uh, that's really like what we did to channel people in. So if we showed them the curse of faith sign. You only focus on that. Only amplify. Don't go show them seven other products no. until they get in the funnel. Then you can go do all. You already got. They're already purchased. Yeah. So then post-purchase, you bought the curse of faith. Yeah. Post-purchase, I'm going to show you the hope and the love. Right. And so you talk about ascension model for brands going from seven to eight. Oh, could you get in deep? <laughs> I want to make sure we got this for everybody. So when you are pushing something, people. Mm. But your recommendation that if they're seeing that ad, only sell them that initially. Don't yeah. try to bring them to a page and show them five, uh, a, Ro a Rolex, a, a Hublot, a, a AP, a, a Timex. Mm -hmm. Because now it's like, what do I? Now you back to like confused mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Only or you want all of them. them. Or want, and then you, you end up, up getting. <laughs> That's what happens, man. You That's know, good. it's 100%. That's good. And so they wouldn't have been, they're not, this so I mean, is, brands are missing a lot of money, bro. A ton of money. So much money that's missed. And then think about the missed opportunity post-purchase, knowing what you targeted, knowing the demographic and then the, the sub niche categories. I know if they bought a dog based product, what is, what's my post-purchase upsells going to be? What if it's a curse of faith and they're in the Christian sub niche category, I'm going to show them the hope and the love as a post-purchase upsell. And I'm going to show them a God is good. And I'm going to put a, uh, a one-time only offer. And then I'm going to send them into my subscription for $5 club, which is just access. Think of it like Sam's club. Is your $5 club monthly? It is monthly. It's recurring. That's talk another about huge. That recurring. Oh, they yeah. talk about that. That's, I don't want them to, <laughs> you giving a lot of gems, bro. Like mm -hmm. I just think like if you just implement some of this is game over. Yeah. yeah. It's so subscription changed the game for us. So we really what reverse and, and just so I'm under, does your subscription come last in the funnel? The $5 call? It would come second. Okay, perfect. So the first offer is always the same product repositioned as a gift for someone else. So whatever they bought, we wow. know there's we know that they really like it or they wouldn't have bought it. And now, especially when it gets more and more closer to Christmas, uh, we'll position it as perfect gift idea for someone else, add another one for X amount and no shipping because right? they've already paid the cost, cost of shipping. So. But are they... Are they getting it to their home, then they find a way to get it to the Correct. customer? Because I was about yeah. to say, that might become extra if they got to add somebody else, ship. Okay, got it. Yeah, and then the second OTO would be a specific, so they would get a physical Ooh. product yeah. that would be exclusive to them uh, that's within the $5 club. So they get a physical product that's $5, um, but then that that gets them into the recurring. And so we would just have basically... $5 a month, you get access to an exclusive range of products. And because you join, we're giving you this for $5. Let me ask you, just so I'm on, on your, with the gift to yourself, I reposition that when, if they aren't taking that, am I downselling that at a cheaper or am I going straight to the $5 club? I take them straight to, I didn't do a downsell on OTO okay, one, uh, one time offer one. And then yeah. upsell or directly, no matter what, up or down, is going to go back to OTO two. Okay. I would typically do 
three upsells, two downsells. Mm. And then a thank you page. The thank you page is, there's an intentionality behind every single placement. And the intentionality, you know, could be at, at the thank you page. Most people, they miss it. Uh, even transaction-based email order confirmations and receipts. Why not, if you're going to send them an email, they're likely going to open it because they immediately bought something and they triggered. We know that they're on their phone. Why not take up that real estate and show them opt in to receive text message notifications on shipment? Why not have them join your VIP group to get, you know, product announcements and exclusive offers? Mm. So having post-secondary objectives that are not monetizable. Um, I think that's where a lot of brands miss the mark on both. That are not monetizable. So that, things on a receipt, I'm not trying to sell you another thing you're saying, but yeah. just another touch point showing my value to you. Yeah. Okay. So join the club, $5 club, yeah. right? Join uh, our SMS, $2. Well, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be still monetizable then? If uh, Well, it, it could be, but it's not, they're not monetizing at that point. It's education. It's an okay. awareness. It's, you know, if we went to this specific URL, now we're going to target them uh, through just pixel remarketing. Yeah. And so I think it's just being cognizant of what is the end user going to receive and ensuring that it's not one overwhelming and you're not getting an order confirmation, a first purchase immediate upsell, and then another email welcome series within a five minute window. So being conscious of that uh, and then taking and consolidating it potentially into one just with conditional splits, yeah. you know, order equals one order equals two. So then you can have customer thank you and then repeat customer thank you, change the copy creative. And then, you know, the- You're a the, ninja, bro. <laughs> they ain't catch it. Y'all listen, rewind and just start, just keep rewatching this y'all. He's going <laughs> crazy. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully I'll get it though, but, but it's, uh, I'll get it. Yeah. It might yeah. take a while, but they're going to get it. It's, it's powerful, bro. Yeah. And I want you to talk about the recurring, the power in that. Yeah. I know the enterprise value that recurring, the ARR, MR, mm. MRR has, and just bro, like my biggest mistake, Colin, mm. in business, biggest, mm. it's not focusing enough on recurring. Mm. So many entrepreneurs are looking at this right now. And at the beginning of the month, the first of the month, they yeah. start from zero. Yeah. You're right. And it just bothers me so much for me, like all of these years, my only folk, my, I should have focused 90% on recurring. Yeah. Russell says, if you don't have recurring, you don't have a business. Mm. So now every so month you got to wake up and just you got to grind again. Yeah. Bro. And that gets, it gets taxing on your body. It does. Yes. Sir. And on your team. It, it, it's stressful, you know, and, and it's like, how well do you deal under pressure? We talked about that at the beginning and it's like, you know, I thrive under pressure. A lot of people don't. Yeah. But when you can take out of the equation, your fixed and variable expenses. So what I would say is like, if imagine how incredible it would be to always know that you're in the black and anything above this is profit, potentially mm -hmm. potential mm -hmm. profit, less whatever the gross profit to get it out is mm -hmm. or the fulfillment of it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, reverse engineering $5 club, how many members would it take for me to have my fixed and variable expenses and variable expenses would be like, okay, over a, a, a six week period of time, what's my employee count average weekly payouts, and then aggregate it and then have that over a 30 day period. So, you know, per day, this is what it costs to operate. Those are your variables. They constantly change in something you need to reevaluate, you know, every month, month and a half, two yeah. months. Um, and, and then kind of reverse oh, engineer your, your fixed and variables, getting it covered by recurring by recurring and then reverse engineer. If you're low on that, if, if you're decline, cause you're going to have churn rates yeah. every month, you're going to have churn. So what's your growth to churn percentage yeah. and what can I do to be intentional beyond? I always need to be in the black. So what I did is I put six months fixed and variable expenses into a savings account. I looked at that as zero. That was my true zero to me. If we dip below that threshold, I was negative. Yeah. And so the subscription helped me mentally know that, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to hit this threshold and I don't have to dip into savings and not working capital. And when you can have that type of peace of mind, it's, you can operate at a level where I feel okay. If I lose money, it's, there's a learning lesson behind it. I can go and spend 50 grand, 60 grand in a day. And there's takeaways, there's learning lessons. I'm not going to do that again if I lose some money. And it's like, how comfortable can you be being uncomfortable? Yeah. And those are the guys that really thrive. Yeah. And they're going to learn, but they're going to learn really quick what not to do. 
And I've got a lot of those. I've got probably a couple million dollars worth of what not to do lessons. Let's share a few of them because I want people to know because I've lost hundreds of thousands in mistakes, Mm -hmm. millions of money that I've not earned Mm -hmm. for not having the right coaches and the right advice. Yeah. So share with the people a few of those what not to do or some mistakes that you like. Golly, that (laughs) – I know you have had seven figure mistakes and oh, six 100%. figure mistakes. If you don't mind sharing a yeah. few, because my goal on our show is how can we help people avoid some of those mm. things? So, hey, you're looking at this and you're probably enjoying this episode and the strategies and the gems that I give you. This is just a fraction of what you learn in my mastermind, right? I would love for you to be able to learn more information on how he's able to help Carter Cofield make a million dollars in one single day, how he's able to help Rochelle Parks make over $500,000 in a day, learn how he's able to help Tevin grow his Instagram following from 70,000 followers to upwards to 200,000 followers within two months. And again, those results are not typical. Let me be very clear, but they are possible for those who are willing to put work in, energy, and effort. If you're looking at this video right now, I want you to go to the website mastermindwithneo.com so you can apply to see if you're a good fit for our mastermind. This is specifically for someone looking to grow their digital business, right? Even though, y'all probably even know David Shan, Sleepers for Suckers, he's inside of my mastermind. You probably know Sonya, the student loan doctor, he's inside of my mastermind. You probably know Darius Daniels, he's inside of my mastermind. Those are just a few more people who are absolutely crushing it as a result of being inside of the community. So listen, if you're looking at this, right, and you're probably looking at the episode like, man, you're dropping so much gems but can you imagine how many gyms you'll get when you're actually inside of the environment, when you're tapped into the community? What I want you guys to go to right now is mastermindwithneo.com so you do not miss out on your opportunity to get tapped in. You will have to apply, you will have to get on the call, and hopefully you make the cut to be a part of what we got. I'll see you on the inside. Let's get back to the episode. So, you know, some of it's like automation rules. People want to automate, people want to make it a lot easier to monetize. So looking at like ads, for instance, you know, you've got your primary ad, you've got your, uh, you do accelerated bid campaigns and then put in cost caps or bid caps. And it's either at the campaign level for the ultimate budget or it's at the ad set uh, side. And so we spent probably 30 grand in a single day before 4 a.m. because of a triggered rule that Mm. went off when it was supposed to go on mm. and it was based on conditions and it was it was more of like an and or an or whereas like if the cpa is above this threshold and it was opposite so it's like it met all the criteria and we couldn't do anything but blame ourselves now it wasn't me that set it up yeah um but so there's some good you learning know, how lessons do you to double check so, so like, having the a team when they do that mistake oh. is there repercussions or is this just like up oh, sorry because i like what happens when it happens? It's cost of doing business, man. Mm. It's, it's, you know, it's a learning lesson. You feel there's gratitude. In a Can sense. they repeat it though? No. All right. What happens if they repeat it? Well, they wouldn't be here. Got it. All right. That's what and I it wanna, didn't happen That's what I'm again. trying to understand so because. I'm, as a business owner, I take responsibility. Yeah. They set it up. They took, you know, initiative to do that. I didn't follow up on it. Didn't even know it was taking place. Yeah. Um, Am I pissed? Hell yeah, I'm pissed. I just lost 30 grand before four in the morning. Yep. I get in and now I'm net negative for the day. And I didn't win the day. Yep. Now I got to offset it by doing extra things that I didn't already plan on doing when I get in. Yeah. Um, but I think it's those little things that this is a learning lesson. We're not going to do it again. And now we're going to put boundaries in place and parameters of when we set this up, there has to be a second set of eyes. Has to. I don't care how good you are or think you are good at it. We're going to have a second set of eyes that are that's qualified uh, that's to put that in place. I like that. So on higher level tasks, second set of eyes. How do you judge when those second set of eyes need to come in for you? We, so we put tier thresholds. So like if, if, if an amount exceeded $10,000, it would have to have my eyes on it. Got it. And so if it was like my office manager, um, she, she was authorized to spend anything up to that threshold unless it was a known fixed and variable expense. Mm. If it's known, I already know it's happening. Yeah. If it's a one-off, then it would just get my approval. Um, I didn't need to sign anything for the bank. That was just the operating procedure we put in place. I like that. And so that's kind of where we put it from a monetization threshold. Yeah. But when it comes to like, you know, one of our largest expenses, like most businesses is paid advertising, the marketing. Yeah. And so I oversaw that for majority of it. So building out all the funnels, the landing pages, whether it was 
lead acquisition or um, an initial tripwire campaign to get um, consumers uh, into those sub niche categories. Yeah. Um, Were you so, doing anything with uh, free just to get them in your world? We did. We did. Well, we did a lot of free plus shipping and then ascension into um, like our subscription. We did two tiers of subscription. One was the $5 club, which was just access. So it's nothing but net profit. Yeah. And then the other one was a physical product mailed to them plus a value exchange of a gift card. So $15 uh, store credit is what do we people call ever it. use the gift cards they they do and they love it and they'll give them out as gifts to someone else too and so we'll put that on the back to intentionally um plant that seed that it's the perfect gift idea and so we want to kind of to, to help you know if cpas are constantly going up cost per thousand or cost per acquisition um what can i do to insert this five cent card that is of value fifteen dollars to a consumer is fifteen dollars um, that's the value store credit 15 to us. If we're operating at an 80% net margin, it's nothing more than three bucks, whatever it is. What would we have paid Facebook to acquire that new customer? Mm -hmm. And so you just look at the offset negative of that yeah. to say, it's much easier to, to take advantage of the, and it's not even taking advantage, but let's use the customer and let's be a value to them. And then it gives them a reason if they're paying 29 95 a month, to be a part of the gift club and they're getting a $15 store credit to them. It's only $15 to be a part of the club to us. It's only a net negative three, right? So there's 27 plus yeah. physical product. And then they pay additionally for shipping and handling. Yeah. Um, so it's, it is, it's a lot of, uh, but we operated off of, you know, the fixed and variable expenses to be yeah. covered baseline. That's smart that, though. So. I, I like that just on a recurring, like I need mm -hmm. to, Fixed and variable expenses covered by all recurring revenue. And yes. You starting it, you starting a month like happy. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, all yeah. right, cool. I got to hustle, but maybe not as hard as I normally will hustle. Yeah. But I still think keeping that mentality that you don't have nothing, like mm -hmm. you said, I think you had six months to hell with zero, but it makes you go hard. I, mm -hmm. There's so many entrepreneurs, and I want you to talk as a nine figure entrepreneur to that individual who's just start making it and then like, oh, I arrived. I like, I think the idea is that you should never arrive. Like mm. you should always be hungry. You should always be hustling. You should always yeah. be pushing forward because yeah. not that even someone's coming to take your spot, but mm. I've learned that you really can't take your foot off the gas you or you shouldn't if you want to just really punch this thing. When the impact is not immediate, that's the challenge is when you think that you've made it, you haven't made it anywhere. And mm. so, you know, you, you could, the impact could be six months or a year down the road but like, for instance, you know, I landed 50 plus magazine covers and all from Alabama, no PR firm, no agency. Yeah. And it was just was men's health, right? Men's health, yeah. men's Remember fitness, that. muscle and fitness, Iron yeah. Man. And um, in my mind, I'm my biggest liability. And I said, what happens if I get into a car accident and mess my face up? Yeah. I've, I mean, I got to be real with myself. Yeah. I'm a yeah. high school dropout. Yeah. I don't have a degree. Yeah. What am I going to do? I'm relying on social media and the influence behind being an influencer early stage. This was 10 plus years ago. Yeah. And so I wanted to bet on myself by starting my own company and always hungry mentality. I didn't, I didn't have a reason to leave. I was the first person to ever leave shreds and I've got nothing but respect for Arvin and, and um, who's a brilliant entrepreneur, CEO, uh, founder of shreds, the supplement brand. But I was the first person to ever leave. And it's because I, I wanted to bet on you. You were working there. I was, I was one of their first um, influencers okay. or nice. yeah, yeah, athletes, yeah. if you yeah. will. Yeah. But we were making, bro, like, you know, 30 grand, 35 grand a month. Yeah. And it's like, I had no reason to leave other than saying, what if, and you have to have that type of scarcity. And it's a scary place to be when you kind of think in your mind, what if you got into a car accident and I'm out of, I can't get, you know, I'm paralyzed from yeah. on the right arm or something yeah. happens. Yeah. And it almost takes a demented thought to say, how am I going to provide for my family? Yeah, that's crazy. Right. I mean, and, and the why is bigger than you. Yeah. And so I've got three kids now yeah. and um, recently divorced, something I didn't want, but it's, it's turned into a blessing. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, when you fight, it's for a greater cause than you. And when you give up, you know, you're giving up not only on yourself, but others around you yeah. and your team, like your why should be bigger than just an individual. So you said something, Colin, I think it's so important. Like you talked about like 
basically what if something happens? Mm-hmm. Like, how do you do that in your business? Like, are, are, are you saying create a plan B and a plan C, but of really just reinforcing another way? Because I use like you were modeling and you're like, well, if something happens, I am screwed. Yeah. But how do a bit, what does a business owner do in that regard? Yeah. So you just put so boundaries, fell okay. safes, right? Okay. So it's kind of like um, the six months fixed and variable expenses are covered. If the government shut you down for COVID, right, what would happen in that? And, and nobody knew that it was coming, but those are kind of like, you have to pivot and shift fast in order to, uh, to make changes. And so that was kind of a learning lesson for us. And we, we thrive. We did, we did well that, that year. We had over a million orders in a single year. Yeah. Um, and that's when we really started to scale the subscription side. Yeah. And I think just putting parameters, you, you know, we were sh- like our products being home decor based and not just wanting to be a fourth quarter only company. We started to look into other um, like apparel shirts, people, they don't, they need shirts every day. Yeah. Right. So why I can't, continue to sell the same person a tree of life and a distressed battle flag and curse of faith and you know we had customers that would buy uh, 100 150 different items from us but we're going to run out yeah and so they were buying it for other people and we had an incredible we needed more uh, and i didn't limit my ability we're redline steel but we were also selling about a hundred thousand shirts per month Crazy. And so we just started, we didn't like Were limit. Were y'all doing them yourself out the warehouse or you? So, so we bought, right. so we bought blanks yeah. from um, Mexico. It was a brand, um, it's called District. Okay. And so it's similar to like Next Level 6210s. Yeah, level. yeah, yeah so yeah, they yeah. fit really good. They're unit sets. They're like $3 and the 10 cents or something. Yeah. Well, I felt like they were when I was selling shirts. Yeah, they've gone up a little since yeah, then. But yeah, like yeah. we would buy blanks and then we created a whip and routing system. So work in progress. And then we would basically warehouse blanks. We had a local print company that would print the it was one side, one color. Yeah. And then we knew what our fixed and variable expenses were. So when an order came in, we were backfilling um, based on what was being replenished. And so we just created a cycle of drop off on Wednesday pickups or drop off on Mondays, pickups on Wednesdays. When we pick up, we're dropping off and became a cycle of um, the overall supply chain for it. So, mm. um, but I think like, not limiting your ability based on um, people get caught up and well, I focus my, my niche is only this. Yeah. Once you've created a baseline, don't be afraid to step outside of those lines a little bit. You have your primary demographic, you have your primary business model, but don't be afraid to kind of like start dabbling into other facets just because your primary focus is just right there. As long as it feeds the ecosystem, yeah. you know, we had a lot of rent, property tax, insurance. That was over 140 grand a month. Yeah. Just those three things, not to wow. include the physical cost of the product, yeah. the shipping, the marketing ad expense, yeah. like everything else. So, you know, we needed to look at to stay alive. What can I do to keep uh, sustainability subscription? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, the shirts, because they needed to buy them often and the frequency was higher than steel. So thinking outside of the box on that side. That's just important. Like you got to really start thinking outside of the box, period, and mm-hmm. start thinking about the future. I love that six month thing, though. I think mm-hmm. that fixed and variable over six months is powerful. I think everybody should focus on that. Um, what's, what's some of your favorite reads right now? Or, or I know Good to Great is one. What's three of your top favorite business books or books that have impacted you? So on the way down here, we were listening to $100 million offers by yeah, Alex yeah, Mosey. Yeah, that's yeah. great. And so I went ahead and downloaded you to the, the leads. leads one yet? I haven't yet. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's, that's a good one. Um, the Kawasaki um, Rich, Rich Dad, Dad Poor Dad. Poor Dad. Yeah, that's I just a listened to it. That's yeah. everybody's. Yeah. That's, it's really good, too. It gives great perception. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, you know, I've never hired a coach. I'm not a part of masterminds. I had my own mastermind yeah. selfishly because I wanted, I thrive under other driven entrepreneurs. We put benchmarks based on, you know, you had never to do, had a coach, no coaches, no, you know, masterminds of like, it's, it's been you just built all of that with no coaching, bro. Yeah. Nothing. Just a hundred percent self self taught, great team, you know, and just a lot of, I've grind. never heard of that. Not a coach, not no, I wouldn't even know where to start, man. Like, because there's a lot of different facets of growing an organization. How would you learn? Were you reading books? Like, uh, are you just figuring it out as you really going? Right, like, you, yeah, no up. schooling. So yeah, your last yeah. schooling was high school, tenth grade. Yeah. So you didn't even finish high school either. Yeah, no high school. 
it's hard to believe just no like not i believe you but yeah. i'm like yeah everything i learn is from i've I, I mean, I, I do some testing learning, but a lot, like, for example, you gave me three things on here I'm going to implement. I'm, mm. I'm getting coaching right now, but mm. I didn't make those things up. I'm like, yo, Colin told me to do this, and I just did it. But yeah. to do it without it is like, I only heard you and, like, one other person say that. Mm. Well, and, you know, I think it's, there's a lot of, you're overwhelmed with so much out there that you do nothing. And the best way for me to learn is by doing it myself, implementing it. And like, um, once we got to certain levels, you talked about letting go. And I really liked that, yeah. that, you know, in order to grow, you have to let go. Mm -hmm. And it's so important that as a business, if you want to scale to the next level, you can only duplicate yourself so much, but you can have levels or standards and expectations as long as it's clearly communicated yeah. that this is what, where we need to be. And then it falls back on you as the, as the CEO, as the founder, the face behind the brand. Um, but delegating to them managed expectations of what I expect uh, and then knowing that, hey, they're going to make mistakes and they may do things different than you. Let it be like if it's not that deep, it's not that big of a deal. You would have done it different. That's OK. Maybe there's learning lessons and something he implemented could be even better than what you did. And then it's just looking at, at another great book that's totally five love languages. Yeah. Implement that in your business. Yeah. Right, knowing how Bro, you I respond. I just learned about love language a few years ago. I'm yeah. like, all these years, for my wife a Lambo truck. She don't care about that crap. Yeah, like she want Time. hold her hand. Yeah, you know what physical I'm saying? touch. Yeah, give her a kiss or something like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, bro. This has been a powerful. Amen. Anything you want to share that you haven't shared mm -hmm. on a public platform or that you want to entrepreneur anybody mm -hmm. to know take it away. I mean. Yeah. So guys, thank you so much, yeah. Neil, for having me down, Appreciate man. It's, it's a blessing to be here. I remember, um, when we, when we met up a couple of years ago, three, three and a half years ago or so at click funnels, uh, I, I had, I think I was on my third Rolls Royce Wraith and yeah. he, he said, uh, Colin, I'm coming for your Wraith. Yeah. And I saw it when we pulled in, yeah. I could see the black Wraith out, yeah. out front and yeah. the power behind just ask, speak, believe, receive. He believed that he knew it was going to happen. And, yeah. and you have risen to levels that are to most would be unimaginable. Yeah. But you believed it. Yeah. And you had a vision and you're carrying it out. And, and I saw you. I saw you. I saw Andy. There was a few people that I saw. I'm like, I can do this. And y'all are at y'all crazy levels going crazy. But I knew that if they can do at least that part, I could get to that point and yeah. just keep Growing. So I appreciate you just being an inspiration, bro, and mm -hmm. just being a good example of what's possible when you really commit and go all in and, and make no excuses, bro. So yeah, yeah, thank, thank you thank for you. being on the show, man. Absolutely, it's yeah. an honor to Let be them here. Let know where they can uh, find you at, Colin. And yeah, so tap in with you, Colin Wayne One on uh, Instagram. All the verified channels. There's a lot of fake ones out there. Um, ColinWayne.com is my website, so y'all can check that out. I also do some advisory and consulting work. So Colin at ColinWayne.com. Yeah, get um, with them, y'all. Yeah. yeah, I'd love to. We're to gonna be put something asset. together too, man. Let's yeah, do it. I'd love to. Out. We're, gonna, yeah. we're gonna do that for sure. Maybe millionaire creator. Yeah, hey, something that's <laughs> gonna make it happen. So, guys, um, we appreciate it. We're gonna put all links below to really tap in with Colin. I'm just grateful for just another episode, and uh, we'll see you on the next one, y'all. Peace.